Welcome to church. Today, Pastor Doug is going to continue our life-changing series, Dreams to Destiny, where he'll be talking about whether or not it's time to give up on our dreams. And if you're new here, we'd love to connect. You can message us on Facebook, Instagram, or by simply texting hello to 587-323-1199, and we will respond right back. I'm so glad you could join us today. to everyone. Two weeks, uh, two weeks ago when I was up here, it was uh, minus 40-something wind chill for like the hundredth day in a row, and uh, we were just hoping for a plus one. But since then, we've had lots of plus ones. We've had even better temperatures. Um, <clears throat> the Oilers have won a bunch of games, except for yesterday. And the Flames have lost a bunch of games, except for yesterday. So um, my apologies if you are a, a Calgary fan. We will have prayer for you after the service. <laughs> so um, it, it really is a privilege to have you with us each week, whether it's in person here on our main floor in the balcony there or, or watching us online. And I know it can sound sometimes so cliched, but it really is so true that it's a privilege that we're partnering together uh, to bring the love of Jesus Christ to the world all around us. So uh, you're all here in the house this morning, and you watching online, you're in your house, joining us in this house. But what's most important is God is in the house today, amen? Amen. amen. So it's been a world we, whirlwind week uh, for many of us, and it's really interesting how when God is doing amazing things, uh, Satan tries to cause distractions and storm clouds and throw us off uh, course, but we declare peace over the situation and we keep going and we keep our eyes on Jesus and we stay on mission. And it was an incredible service last Sunday. It was like, wow. Uh, my wife and I had the incredible opportunity to be in the mountains for a couple days, but all of a sudden, due to a family emergency, that uh, trip was cut short, and I suddenly found myself watching the start of the service, sitting on an airplane, waiting for it to take off. And then I watched the rest of it in my hotel room, and it was so great to see the Holy Spirit move in such a powerful way last Sunday. So please make sure that if you're at home or you're connecting with us somehow, because we don't want you to miss uh, the incredible things God is doing and the incredible things he's saying to each one of us individually, but as, as a church in general. So we've had uh, two extremely important uh, series in the last uh, few weeks, the last couple months, one on spiritual warfare and the armor of God, and now our Dreams to Destiny series. And these are really key, again, to what God is saying to us right now. So this morning, we're continuing our series, Dreams to Destiny, How Your Character Can Determine Your Future. So we've been looking at the life of Joseph and how he was a young man. He was a young man with incredible God-given dreams, but he had to go through. He had to go through all these series, the series of character developments so he could reach his destiny as the second most powerful man in Egypt. And he didn't end up saving only his, uh, his family. He ended up saving millions of Egyptians and, and many other people um, as well. And Joseph had so many opportunities to give up, so many opportunities to quit. I'm sure many times along the way in the, in the pit, in prison, I'm sure he asked, is it time for me to give up? Man, should I just quit? Sure, I had these dreams and I thought they were from God, but maybe they weren't. Maybe I had spicy Indian food last night or pizza and maybe that's where the dreams came from. But as Pastor OJ shared last week, 
It was especially hard for Joseph because he did everything right. He did everything right. He responded properly. He fled from temptation. He kept a good attitude, and yet he still, he still found himself unjustly in prison. But, but, God did not forget about him, nor has he forgotten about you or the dreams he's given you. And no matter how old you are, no matter what age you are, no matter what stage you're in, God has not forgotten about the dreams he's given you. And why hasn't he? Because your dreams are so big and so important. And, sorry, they're not just about you. They're not just about me. They're not just about you. The dreams God gave Joseph were not for his sake. Sure, he, he benefited from them, but ultimately they were for the purpose of helping other people. So God's dreams and destiny for us are more about others than they are about us. And this is so true because God wants to partner with us because he made each one of you unique. He made each one of you in a way that only you can do the thing that he wants you to do. You know, Walt Disney said, you can dream, create, design, and build the most wonderful place in the world, but it requires people to make the dream a reality. It requires people to make the dream a reality. And that is so true with God as well. He partners with you. He partners with me to cause our dreams and destiny to come to pass so we can help the dreams and destiny of other people to come to become a reality too. So today is the sixth in our series and it's entitled Dreams to Destiny. Is it time to give up? Is it time to give up? And so far we've had the pride test, we've had the pit test, we've had the palace test, we've had the purity test, we've had the prison test, and today is the prophetic test. So what is that, exactly does that mean? Sometimes when we say the word prophetic or prophecy, people get all spooked out about it and stuff, but what, what it means is that it means that all of these things so far in Joseph's life kind of pertain to specific events, but this is a general overview of God moving him from his dreams towards his destiny. It's like an oversight of his journey. And the question we need to ask ourselves today, the question everyone needs to ask is, will I believe God's words? Will I believe God's promises no matter what comes my way? No matter where I find myself, in prison, in a pit, will I believe God's words that he has spoken over me? That is the prophetic test, the test of God's word. You see, God had spoken a word over Joseph's life through his dreams. Then Joseph went through some very difficult times where it seemed as though God's words and God's plans would never come to pass. But in those times, Joseph was tested by the words God had spoken over him. Meaning, would he believe God's words or, or would he believe the words of despair and hopelessness that his circumstances seemed to confirm? Psalms 105.19 says, Until the time that his, Joseph's word, of prophecy regarding his brothers came true, the word of the Lord tested and refined him. So the prophetic test in Joseph's life was about, number one, God had given Joseph dreams for his life. Number two, God had spoken over him regarding his future. And number three, everything he went through tested those dreams, tested Joseph's character, tested what God had spoken over him. And Joseph could have walked away at any point, or Joseph could have believed those that dismissed his dreams. 
He could have asked, wow, is it time for me to give up? Is it time for me to just quit? But he didn't. So how does that relate to us this morning? So the prophetic test in our lives is about how, number one, God has given us dreams for our lives. Number two, God has spoken over us regarding our future. And number three, everything we go through, everything you go through, everything I go through, tests those dreams, tests our character, tests what God has spoken over us. And, and if we don't give up, if we continue to trust God, even when we're being tested, even when we don't see things come to pass, if we don't give up, we'll step into the dreams and we'll step into the destiny that God has for us. John Maxwell has this incredible quote about Joseph. He says, Joseph went from privileged son to the pit of slavery to the palaces of Egypt. And it all started with a dream. And the period between a dream's birth and realization is always a process. It's always a process. During this process, you'll experience good days and bad days. Frequently, you'll be faced with a dilemma. Do you give up or do you go on? Joseph's example encourages you not to give up on your dreams. This is so powerful this morning. Do I give up or do I go on? It's a choice. And again, no matter what age you are, no matter what age or what stage you're at in your life, God still has dreams for you. God still has things for you to accomplish. And in not giving up, in not giving up, especially when things get difficult, it's important to understand something this morning. It's important to understand. And what that is, is who speaks over us. Who speaks over us? So number one, our enemy. Our enemy loves to speak over us. The devil is a liar, and his entire purpose is to kill, steal, and destroy God's dreams for your life, God's destiny for your life. And he'll do everything to try and disable you, to render you harmless, because that way you can't influence those people that you and only you are called to influence. Jesus says about him in, in John 8, he, Satan, has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it's consistent with his character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So we see the devil will use lies, he'll use fear, he'll use anxiety, he'll use temptation, fatigue, despair, division, and more. All of those things to try and cause us to give up. And you know what? He's very, very sneaky and very conniving how he does it. Often he distorts things just a little bit. He distorts it just enough for us to say, oh, whoa, okay, uh, wow. Is that, is that true? Is that, wow, okay. And the first thing... That Satan said in the Garden of Eden, the very first thing that he did was to, was to question God's words. He said, did God really say that? Are you sure that's what God meant? Are you sure? And it causes us to stop and question ourselves or question God. Mark 4, Jesus says that Satan will come and try and steal the word of God, steal God's promises that have been sown into our hearts, sown into our lives. And I'm sure Joseph wondered many times, did God really speak to me through those dreams? Were those really from God? However, however, Ephesians 4.21 tells us that all truth, 
All truth is found in Jesus. And Ephesians 6.14, we just finished this series, says that we stand against the enemy's lies by wearing the belt of truth. In our Armor of God series, Pastor Bev covered a whole message on the belt of truth and the power of God's word. Max Lucado says in his book, Unshakable Hope, we are building our lives on the promises of God because his word is unbreakable. Amen? I recently listened to this incredible, it was a really incredible, powerful testimony. It was kind of scary and stuff, but it was about a woman who came from a long family history of the occult. And with God's grace, she broke out of that. She left the darkness. She became a Christian. She married a wonderful Christian man. They had four boys. But in her family's dark past, there had never been in their known history a firstborn male child live past the age of 18. And she had four boys. I want you to catch this. Not once in the known history of her family had the firstborn male child ever lived past the age of 18, and her oldest son was 17. So she remembers that on the day he was born, she felt the devil say, that is my child, I will have him. Just as he had killed all of them previously. But as a warrior mom, for 17 years, she fought against what the devil had spoken over her firstborn son and the curse that had been placed on her family. She spoke God's promises and protection over him again and again and again. And shortly before his 18th birthday, she was praying and the devil again said, I'm going to take your son before his birthday. Well, she walked into church on the following Sunday and a pastor prayed for her, and he didn't know anything about her situation, anything about her past. And this is what he prayed over her. He said, you come out of a family of spiritual darkness, and you come out of generations of spiritual darkness, and God knows that. And here's what Jesus, here are the words that Jesus speaks over you today. It will never happen to you and your children. And she bursts into tears. Of course, this pastor has no idea what that meant until he asked her later on. Today, her firstborn son is 23, and that curse has been broken off of their family. God's word spoken over her son for 17 years defeated the curse, defeated the enemy's words that had been spoken on her family for generations. Isn't that incredible? What has the enemy spoken over you or your family or your children that you need to break with God's word and God's promises? The book of Revelation tells us that we overcome Satan's words over us. We overcome his accusations by the blood of the Lamb and the power of God's words that come out of our mouths. So who else speaks over us? Other people. The words that other people speak over us often pierce right to our hearts. Many today or watching online, many here today or watching online have examples of how your parents or your spouses or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your teacher or your coach or friends or bosses spoke dream-killing words over you. They spoke dream-killing words over you. Even not... Even not speaking any words of encouragement can often have the same effect as speaking negative dream-killing words. You may have heard growing up, you're a failure. You'll never succeed. 
You're useless. Why don't you just quit? Many have heard those words spoken over them from a young age. Even Joseph's dad questioned his dreams. And of course, his brothers outright mocked them. Proverbs 12, 18 says, Careless words stab like a sword, but wise words bring healing. Proverbs 18, 2 says, Words kill, words give life. They're either poison or fruit. You choose. Gary Chapman, in his book, Love as a Way of Life, says that words are either bullets or words are seeds. Are our words killing others or are they creating and planting life in others? Parents, and and I know from being a parent, it's so easy to fall in the trap of criticizing our children, and especially if we grew up with parents who criticized us. And there's a powerful story of a major league baseball player who's speaking to inmates in prison. One of the inmates asked him, how did you become a professional baseball player? The player answers and says, you know, I'm not exactly sure, but I think it started when I was a boy. I would play catch with my dad, and he would always say, you keep throwing the ball like that, son, you'll end up in the major leagues one day. You keep swinging the bat like that, son, and you'll end up in the major leagues one day. And here I am, a professional baseball player. And the room became extremely silent. And the inmate who asked the question replied, You know, the same thing happened to me. When I was a boy, my father told me that I was good for nothing. I was useless. I couldn't do anything right. And that one day I would end up in prison, and here I am. I'm also reminded of a story when... We were at another church and Christian school many, many years ago, and things began to change, and we felt that God was starting to move us out of that church and school, and we were driving home with the kids who were still quite young, and they're playing in the back seats of the van, when our daughter said, one of our teachers told us today that if we ever left this church or school, our parents would get divorced, we'd lose our house, dad would lose his job, and our lives would fall apart. We sat stunned as we heard this, and you could see my wife starting to steam. But she calmly managed to ask my daughter, and she said, what do you think? And my daughter said, that's not my God. And she continued on as if nothing had happened. She was not about to let the words of others affect God's dream for her or her family because she knew the true character of God. But if we're not careful, the words that we speak or the words that others speak over us can derail or shatter God's dreams for us. So be careful of who your close friends are. Only have friends who will speak into your life, who will encourage you towards God's dreams for you. Who else speaks over us? The third one is ourselves. Often, We are harder on ourselves than anyone else. We convince ourselves that this is impossible. I can't do it. I quit. I'll never succeed. It's time to give up. James 3.5 says, is paraphrased this way. It says, the human tongue is physically small, but what tremendous effects it can boast of. A whole forest can be set ablaze by a tiny spark of life. And the tongue is as dangerous as any fire with vast potentialities for evil. It can poison the whole body. It can make the whole of life a blazing 
hell. Wow. Wow, that is so crazy, but so true. What are you saying about yourself, and what damage is it causing? Here's another very true quote that says, Words are singularly the most powerful force available to humanity. We can choose to use this force constructively with words of encouragement or destructively using words of despair. Words have energy and power with the ability to help, to heal, to hinder, to hurt, to harm, to humiliate, and to humble. We need to filter all of the words that are spoken over us by the enemy, by others, and by ourselves. We need to focus... Uh, We need to filter them all through God's words. We need to fight for what God has said about us, about our dreams and our future. The fourth person that speaks over us is God. You know what? God never looks at a single person here. God never looks at a single person watching online. And he never says, you're a failure. You can't do that. You'll never fulfill your dreams. There you go again. God created you and said, you are perfect. God is constantly thinking about you. Constantly speaking over you nothing but love and acceptance. Psalms 139 says, how precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be numbered. Every single moment, God is thinking of you. How precious and wonderful to consider that he cherishes you constantly in his every thought. His great thoughts and words of love towards you are more than the grains of sand on every seashore, on every beach in the world. Ephesians 1 says, Long before Way before he laid down earth's foundations, he had us in mind. He had you in mind. He had me in mind. He had settled on us as the focus of his love to be made whole and holy by his love. Long, long ago, he decided to adopt us into his family through Jesus Christ. What pleasure he took in planning this. What pleasure God took in planning his incredible plans for your life, his incredible dreams for your life. It gave him great pleasure to plan those for you. And the concept of adoption is so precious here. It's a picture of a slave that has been beaten down physically and with words and whipped and abused and had no rights, no hope, no future, no dreams, no destiny. It was definitely time for that slave to give up. But Jesus paid a ransom. He paid a price for you and for I. He adopted us with all the legal rights of a son and daughter because he loves each and every one of you so, so much. Like the prodigal who messed up and made bad choices, the father was waiting with love for them to return, to restore their future, to restore their dreams. God speaks over your dreams. He speaks over your destiny. In the book of Jeremiah, we see that God had spoken to the children of Israel, and he told them they would go into captivity for 70 years. But as the 70 years was ending, God was beginning to put them back on the road to the dreams and destiny he had for them. And this is what he spoke over them. He said, after that time, I will come to my people who are living in Babylon. I will keep my good promise to bring you back to Jerusalem. I say this because I know the plans that I have for you. I don't plan to hurt you. I plan to give you hope and to give you a good future. God speaks over you to restore your dreams, to restore your destiny. 
No matter what the reason we've given up on our dreams, no matter what the reason we want to quit, God is speaking over you to restore the dreams, to restore the destiny. Ephesians 2 says, For we are God's masterpiece. You're God's masterpiece. He's created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. The dreams and destiny he had for us long ago. He made you a special masterpiece so you can fulfill those. God loves you so much He not only speaks over you, but did you know God sings over you as well? Zephaniah 3.17 says, He will rejoice over you with great gladness. He will love you and not accuse you. He's not there to accuse you. Is that a joyous choir I hear? What's that singing? It's the Lord himself exulting over you in happy song. God has called each one of us for a specific purpose. There's no one else who can do what, has, what God has called you to do. There's no one else who can do what God has called me to do. This is one of the most amazing aspects of God as a designer and a creator. There are trillions of snowflakes out there, and no two of them are exactly the same. There are billions of humans, and each human has unique, a unique fingerprint. Each one of us leaves our own special mark on this planet. What has God called you to do? What has God spoken over you? Like Joseph, will we believe God's words? Will we believe them or will we believe the words of despair and hopelessness that sometimes our circumstances seem to confirm? How many of you are aware of what a weighted blanket is? A weighted blanket. So I saw a bizarre tweet the other day that said, 2020 was the year of the weighted blanket. And for those of you who don't know what a weighted blanket is, it's literally a comforter with a whole bunch of stitched pockets that are full of glass or plastic beads, and it can weigh anywhere between 5 and 25 pounds. Well, being someone who likes a single comforter and being married to a wife who likes many blankets plus an electric blanket, blanket, This seemed like the worst invention possible. But I went ahead and I picked out a pretty 15-pound weighted blanket for my wife, and I placed it under the tree for Christmas. In fairness, in fairness, it did replace some of the layers on her side of the bed, except for the electric blanket, of course. But do you know what happens when you fold a 15-pound weighted blanket in half? It gets a lot heavier. It gets twice as heavy. That blanket now covers about two-thirds of our bed like an iron dome. And if I do manage to venture under it, I feel like I'm in a panini press or a waffle maker. And the heaviness makes it hard to move because it weighs down on top of you. The worship team can go ahead and come on back up. And while that was a humorous story, the truth is this morning that there are words that have been spoken over us by the enemy that are weighing us down, preventing us from moving from God's dream to our destiny. Or unfulfilled dreams in our lives have caused us to believe it's time to give up. If you're struggling right now with this, what if the enemy has targeted you from the very beginning because he suspects what your destiny is and he's unleashed every weapon in his arsenal to keep you from fulfilling it? What if he so fears God's plan for your life 
that he's tried to keep you silent. He's tried to keep you from what you and only you can offer those around you. What if you are more glorious than you ever dreamed you were? What if it's true that when others look at the outward appearance, God looks at the heart, and when he looks at you, you take his breath away? What if, he, what, if what has been forged in you through all these years, through all the pain and frustration you gone, you've gone through, is more priceless than gold. Because even now, Jesus is speaking over you, speaking words of love, speaking words of acceptance over you. Even now, no matter how you've messed up, he's speaking and singing words of hope and destiny over you. Today, today you can be free from self-hatred. You can be free from shame. You can be free from accusation. You can be free from judgment. You can be free from sin. Please stand with me this morning. If you're watching at home, I'd welcome you to stand as well. Just bow your heads with me, and I, I just want you to repeat after me. I just want everybody to repeat. You don't have to yell it, but you just repeat after me. In Jesus, I am somebody. I have a dream from God. I am going somewhere. I have a destiny. The devil cannot hold me back. It's not time to give up. Because God has not forgotten me. Some of you this morning, you really need that fresh word from God that he's speaking over you today. After 2020, you may be so discouraged, but it's not time to give up. Instead, you need to remind yourself of what God has spoken over you or what other people, the positive things that other people have spoken over you. We all have maybe teachers or coaches or, or parents or friends that spoke positive things over us that said, you can do it, you can succeed. It's time to remember those things. It's time to say what God has spoken over you, over your family, over your marriage, over your job, over your dreams, over your future. And if you're here this morning or watching online and you admit that there have been words spoken over you that have caused a lot of hurt and damage, and you maybe have given up on God's dreams for your life because of it, this morning is the perfect opportunity for you to ask God for his help and take the step of getting back on the road to your destiny. And maybe you're here this morning or you're watching online and you've never asked Jesus to come into your life. You didn't realize that he loves you, that he's spoken incredible things over you and your future. But this morning, you want to know that. You want to know Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray, and I, again, I want you just to pray after me. So bow your heads with me. Jesus, I realize that my sins and failures have separated me from you. Thank you for dying for me. I humbly ask for your help. Please come into my life. I need you right now. I need your help every day. Thank you for this new start. Amen. Amen. And again, at the end of the service, uh, we're going to close with a song here in a minute. And at the end of the service, if you want prayer, uh, we'd love to pray with you. If you're online watching, you can submit a prayer online and someone would be glad to, to pray with you. Maybe you just need that hope again this morning that God has not forgotten about you. He's not forgotten about the dreams for your life. And all the words that he speaks over you are so much more powerful than what the enemy or others have spoken over you. So let's just close with this. Uh, this uh, sorry, if you've, 
uh, accepted Jesus into your life for the first time ever, you can text us um, at 587-323-1199. We've got some amazing material we can share with you about how to take some next steps on, on the incredible dreams and journey God has for your life. Thanks for joining us. If you need anything, do not hesitate to contact us. You can find more information on our website or on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. We'll see you again soon.